My story this morning is about meatloaf, a dead woman, and a priest. Uh, these seem to have been instrumental in helping me develop some of my values. But let me be clear, when I talk about meatloaf, I'm not talking about meatloaf paradise by the dashboard light meatloaf. I'm talking about Hamburg. My mother is the 10th of 14 children, born during the Depression, and uh, they, she grew up in a very small three-bedroom house. Her mother was bedridden most of her adult life and died at 52. Her father, who was alcoholic, uh, worked three full-time jobs to support the family. And my mother used to say things like, it was so wonderful growing up in this big Irish Catholic family. It was just so beautiful, so joyous. And I kept thinking my whole life, it's sort of like, there's still another story that I might not ever learn, but I doubt it was that much fun. One of my mother's favorite stories about childhood is how her mother would make dinner for everybody with a pound of Hamburg. She would make a meatloaf, doctor it up with uh, tomato soup, bread, uh, and eggs. And then, of course, because we're Irish, um, you know, there was always potato, uh, plenty of that. And uh, when my mother sometimes looks at old pictures, you know, she says, you know, this is the problem with kids today. They're so overweight because they're in the house all the time. We were outside playing. We were so healthy. We were so fit. And I look at the pictures and I think, you're skinny and malnourished. Like, you know, like I wouldn't, you don't look like healthy children during the Depression. So in spite of what the challenges that they had, there was this unspoken credo uh, in the family that uh, no matter how little, you always take care of the people around you. And my family didn't grow up with a lot of money. And if it had not been for my mother's very large extended family to fill in the gaps, and there were a lot of gaps, um, we probably wouldn't have done as well as we did. So one of the things that my mother really enjoyed about her life was giving food to people, uh, which is sort of annoying when you're a kid because you're usually the person that has to go bring the food uh, to the people. So we had this family that lived down the street from us on the same block, uh, the Collinses. They had six kids. And I remember the very first time I went down to their house, um, it was winter time, and I was struck by a couple of things. One, they had no heat. They had a kerosene heater uh, that really smelled bad. Uh, plus, the place just smelled of filth, uh, which was largely related to the fact that they had a dirt floor. And so this is early 70s in Rutland City, not Appalachia, uh, a block off Route 7. Um, and I remember sort of feeling like, wow, I thought like our house was like, you know, gross sometimes, but you know, this house is much worse. And uh, I think they had electricity, I'm not sure, because um, sometimes I'd see a light on, but even their refrigerator was unplugged and on the porch, and that's what would keep the food cold during the winter months. So, here I am a middle school kid. I hate being embarrassed. I'm nerdy, I'm geeky, I'm self-conscious. I would get so annoyed when my mother said, I'm making food for the Collinses, you gotta bring it down, Kevin. Because uh, any opportunity to be embarrassed was the end of the world. So my mother would get this cookie sheet, and she would take a piping hot uh, meatloaf out of the oven, and a dozen or so baked potatoes, and then a casserole dish with some cream corn in it. And I had to walk down the street with it, so I would I walk down. Well, not surprising, I, I, go to, I went to Catholic school. Um, and in Catholic high school, our principal was a priest. And he really set the tone for the school, which was service and giving back. And he often talked about how our school was not a building, it was a community. And his inspiration really sort of catapulted giving back and community service to sort of a D1 sports level at our school. I mean, everyone did community, every sports team did community service, every club did community service, every kid in detention did community service. Um, it was a very big deal. And uh, one of the things that we did is I was on the student council and we came up with a, a program called Project Help. And we closed the school for the day, the kids canvassed the city, collected food, came back to uh, the school, baskets were made, and then delivered to the needy for Thanksgiving. And uh, I remember the nights leading up to, 
to uh, Project Help, I'd be laying on the floor at my friend Peanut's house, and we'd have all the map, we'd have maps of the city all over the place, and we're kind of making quadrants for each class, which class was going to cover which area. So it sort of had a situation room, kind of a war room, except the battle was really to collect the most food for the most number of people. So when I think of these three elements, I think about sort of the role that, that a dead woman and a priest played you know, in becoming the man I am today. But I never imagined that Chuck, ground Chuck, uh, actually <laughs> would have been what taught me how to be a neighbor. Thanks. <laughs>